Welcome to Rad Studio XZ5. In this short video, we'll show you how to get your development environment set up for building iOS applications. There's two ways to build iOS applications. One is to have a Macintosh and connect your device via the Mac. The other way is to use Mac and Cloud. There's a separate video on the Start Here page that shows you how to leverage Mac and Cloud if you don't have an Apple iOS device. In this video, I've got a Macintosh and I've got an iOS device connected to it. So I'm going to show you how to set up your development environment. In my configuration, I'm running a MacBook Pro running Mountain Lion 10.8.4. And I'm also running Windows 7 64-bit as a guest operating system using VMware Fusion. This allows me to run the Windows-based Rad Studio XE5 IDE at the same time connect to a Macintosh to do OS 10 development and also do my iOS deployment and testing and debugging. In order to connect my Windows IDE to the Macintosh and also to the device, I need to install the Platform Assistant Server or PA Server. And that's part of your install. You'll find it over in Program Files, Embarcadero, Rad Studio 12, in this folder called PA Server. And here you'll find a package file, rad PA Server exe5.pkg. Now I've taken that file and I've copied it over to a shared folder on my Macintosh. All I need to do is double click and it will install the PA server on the Mac. I'll just take the default location and now the PA server is installed. I like to create an alias and then put that alias on my desktop. We'll start the PA server and I have to get permission from the OS 10. I can hit I, which is one of the parameters to see the commands and it'll tell me the IP address. I'll need to know that when I make the connection from the Windows machine to talk to the PA server, which then talks to the device. You also need to make sure that you have the Xcode command line tools installed. And here it'll tell me when I go to Xcode preferences and the downloads section that I've got some simulators installed and the command line tools are installed. I can also quickly go to the window organizer menu item to make sure that my iPhone or iPad is connected with little green a circle. It says it's connected and that I have a provisioning profile for doing development. I don't have to use Xcode for anything else. Just make sure I have the command line tools. Now we can go back to the IDE and we can create a project, say file new, FireMonkey mobile application. Let's just choose the, the header and footer application. And we can go over to our target platform, iOS device, and we need to set up a configuration. So we can go and choose an SDK. So add new, it's iOS device, add a new profile to connect. Let's call this my uh, Mac connection. I need to give it a remote machine name or IP address over here at my of my Macintosh, which is 10.20.5.111, or it could be a computer name. You can have an optional port number. Default is 64211. You can have a password if you want to protect the connection from anybody else. You can make sure that you've got the right machine name or IP address. It's successful, and we're finished. And then we can also set the SDK version. And when I make that connection, the first thing it's going to do is make sure it can find all of the libraries and command line tools that are available over on the target machine. And then we can see under target for iOS device, my iPhone is connected. And we'll activate that target platform and change the design surface so that it matches the phone. Let's put a button down on our form and we'll change its property to click me. And then we'll double click to create an on click event handler. We'll say button one dot text is gonna get 42. And then once we have the target connection made, we can just say run to do the compile, linking, and deploying of our application to our device. And we'll see our application arrive. I'm using a utility called Reflector to allow us to see on our Macintosh desktop what's appearing over on the device. Click, click me, and there's the answer 42. For iOS development, we can also use the simulator. Again, in this case, the target can be an iPhone. We use the simulator this time and activate that target type, hit run, and now we've got the same application. If we don't have a device but we have a Macintosh, we can still do our some development and testing. There's also some hardware options here to do rotation, gestures, 
do some debugging, do location-based. So the simulator can get you part of the way, but ultimately having the device uh, is a good way to go. And again, there's this other video on the Start Here page that shows you how to use Mac and Cloud to do a lot of your development if you don't have a Macintosh. And that's how easy it is to set up your development environment and do iOS development. The next step is to check out all the other videos that are on the Start Here page for iOS development. So have a great time building mobile applications with Rad Studio XE5.